So I've made this episode for those who are fairly new to cinema and just want to get the renders to look nice quickly. Because I know it's quite daunting when you're first starting out and there's a lot to learn. And it can be quite discouraging when your renders aren't looking as good as you'd hoped, you know. So I decided to uh, make this episode so you can get something to look nice quick. So um, the scene we're going to be building will consist of two main elements. We've got this dome light and then we've got this um, curtain here. And just to show you what to expect towards the end, I've done a few renders in advance. And as, as you can see, we've got these nice, clean, professional looking renders. And they've been done with very minimal effort. Just this dome light and this um, extrude, which is making this um, backdrop curtain. And then obviously the sphere in the middle. Now, some of these may not appeal to you. You know, it's all subjective and context is important as well. Because say if you wanted a winter scene, you may not go with this, but you may go with this for the cool colours and so on and so forth. But anyway, I'll break down what we're working with. So in the middle here, we've got the sphere, which is the main subject of the shot. Now, I'm just using the sphere so we can focus on the overall render quality rather than the content of the shot. So you can replace this sphere with whatever object you're working with. That's that's fine by me. I'm just using Sphere. You can use a Sphere if you want. I'm just using this for the sake of demonstration. It's up to you, whatever object you use there. Um, the backdrop, um, we're using this for filling the background without drawing attention away from the subject. And it also covers the horizon line because the horizon line is a big no-no in 3D. Um, you want to make sure it's covered um, in most cases or in all cases if possible, just because it can make the viewer feel really uneasy when they see it. Um, just because if you've got a flat and um, sharp horizon line, it, it just doesn't look natural. You don't really see that in the real world. It's always some kind of curvature or something obstructing the view. And say if you've got an external shot, there's chances are there's going to be some bumps in the road, mountains in the distance, mist, fog, depth of field, things like that. You just wouldn't have a sharp line. Um, and then the last part of this shot is to do with the lighting, which is being cast by this dome light. Now the dome light's using a photoreal HDR image to light the scene so we can get realistic lighting very quickly. Uh, not only that, but it provides an environment for the object material to reflect. So it saves us from having to build an environment in the scene as well, which is very efficient. So um, yeah, I'll make a start on showing you how to build it. So what we're going to do is select and hold this spline um, tab and release on arc. Then we're going to hit R, grab this blue handle, and whilst holding shift, go down 90 degrees. Then we're going to press C to make it editable. And then we're going to select this here, enable axis. And then we're going to grab this blue one whilst holding shift and go back negative 90 degrees. And you can see the object isn't moving. That's what this... Um, enable axis does it allows us to move the axis of the object without moving the object okay so i'm just going to undo this we had to make it editable as well in order to do that that's why i made it editable at that stage um, before we disable this we're going to hit snap and then go into the modeling settings and make sure point is enabled then we're going to drag drag the axis and snap it to the bottom point of this arc now we can turn these off go to the arc going coordinates and then you can see we've got these two arrows here to increment the value in this parameter. What we want to do is right click one of those arrows and it will reset the parameters value to its default settings which in our case is zero. Then we're going to go into points, grab this point on the white end of the spline not the blue end. You can see one side's white and it fades into a blue uh, via a gradient. We want the white end and we're going to hold control, grab this red x-axis handle and drag it out. It doesn't matter how, mu how much by, uh, it's just, we're just dragging it out to extend the spline. We're going to do the same thing for the top. However, before we drag it out, we're going to right click, go into point order and reverse sequence. Now we're going to do the same thing, just holding control and dragging up. Now if you were to do that on the blue end of the spline, what you'd get is this this mess here, so that's why we need to do it on the white end of the spline. Okay, so we've got the basis of the backdrop curtain now. Um, all we need to do is make it into an actual curtain. So what we're going to do is hold Alt, 
click and hold on the generator tab here and then release on extrude. Now by holding alt, we made it apparent of this spline here. Now we're going to go into object, go into offset and set this to a thousand. And then I'm just going to select model mode, grab this blue and Z axis handle and then just snap it by 500 centimeters just because that's half of the offset which we've set here. Okay, so now it's in the center of the scene again. That's great. And now before we finish off with this, we're going to select flip normals. Now I'm just going to demonstrate here so you don't need to follow um, what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm just going to go into polygons. I'm going to make this editable and select the polygons. Now you can see one side of the polygons is blue and the other side is yellow. Now on the yellow side, um, this will be representing the front face of the polygon, which will be calculating the shading and lighting. This is the side we want to be viewing. On the blue side, we're getting the back face of the polygon. Now, this is a side which you don't really want to be seeing at all. Uh, in some cases, you can't avoid it, but for the most part, if you can avoid seeing the blue um, face of the polygons, great, because otherwise it's going to miscalculate, uh, well, it can miscalculate the shading and lighting and give you incorrect results. So just to be aware of that. Now there's two ways we can fix this. One is by right clicking and hitting reverse normals. Now that's solved the problem. However, we can't do that with the generator, which is what we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna undo so we're back to that point. What we can do is select flip normals. Now, again, just for the sake of demonstration, you don't need to follow this part. If I make this editable, you can see we've flipped the normals. We've got the orange side facing the correct direction now. Okay, so I'm going to undo and you should be at this stage here. We've got flip normals selected and the extrude here. Now we're going to create a material. We're going to create a very diffuse material. Um, I'm going to go for something very unrealistic, but we get the advantage of it. You know, we're in 3D world now. We can do what we want. Um, so what I'm going to do is create this material. I'm going to set it to white. I'm going to set the reflection roughness to one and then I'm going to set the diffuse roughness to one. Now this is just personal preference just to make it incredibly diffuse. I mean it might be over the top for your purposes so in your case maybe turn this down but I'd, I'd recommend um, dialing down the reflection roughness last. Like I'd say something like this is fine but for my purposes I want to go over the top and go with this where it's just the light's just dispersed um, across the sphere. Now, some of you may end up with a different material panel, something like this. I'm just gonna clear these out. Now you may end up with an interface like this, or you'll have a setup here, which looks like this with these names here. How you deal with that is you go into the diffuse. I'm gonna set this to 80. And then in the diffuse roughness, which is the same as the diffuse roughness, which we set before, set that to one. And then reflection roughness, we can set that to one, which is the same as what we had before. Now, I'm just going to use what I was using before and get rid of this other one. But it's just how you can get to that stage if you're using a different version of Redshift. Okay, so I'm going to drag this on the extrude. Now we've got this white curtain. If we go into the render view, which I have down here, select a IPR and we can see we've got the curtain. Now there's no lighting yet. And that's what we're going to deal with now. So by clicking and holding the lighting tab, we're going to get a dome light. Now by default, the dome light will just cast an omnidirectional white light on into the scene. So we've just got white light coming from all angles, which is not what we want. Um, unless you're going for something clinical, maybe that's something you want. But in my case, that isn't what I want. So we're going to replace this white light with a HDRI. Now, if I haven't already explained, um, a HDRI, which is what we're going to get from this site here, actually, just, just to um, highlight, this site is really good for textures, models, and HDRIs. You can get them for free. And as we've got here, not just free, but CTO, that's a license, meaning you can use them for absolutely any purpose without restrictions, which means you can use them commercially um, you don't need to give credit and things like that. Great resource. Anyway, back to HDRIs. Um, I can't find the one which I'm going to be using, but I'll post it in the description to give credit, even though we don't have to, but it's just a nice thing to do. 
Um, a HDRI is a high dynamic range image. Now, how that differs from a regular PNG or a JPEG or some other image format is that it can store values beyond white and black. So white being um, a value of one and black being a value of zero, you can actually get values beyond one and be like beyond or below zero. So you can get incredibly white whites and incredibly dark blacks. Now that comes in useful because we can use those incredibly light whites to simulate the lighting um, that was taken from that photo. So we're basically using HDRIs to provide us with lighting in the scene, real world lighting, so it's going to be photorealistic by default, as well as an environment to show up in the reflections of the object materials. So we're getting a lot of information with very little effort, which is incredible. So I'm going to use, I think it's this one. Um, I'll double check and I'll post it in the description. But I'm just going to go and get that HDRI, drop that in. So we can see we've got a 360 image of the inside of someone's apartment. And we're going to be using the lighting from this window here, where it's just an intense sunlight coming through. That's going to be lighting our scene. So if I just give it a quick check now, you can see we've got light coming in, we've got shadows. This is great. However, I want to move the lighting. So I'm going to go into the dome light, go into the coordinates and rotate it until we have light um, casting onto here. Okay, now this might be a bit too much. So I'm going to say 150, something like that. that. That'll do for now. We can always adjust it later, but this will do for me. Okay, now the first thing I don't like is the fact that we're still inside someone's apartment. So let's fix that. Let's run the IPR again. Go into the dome light. Go into Object and turn off Background. There we go. Great. Now we've got rid of it. So now we're just dealing with lighting information and it will still still show up in Material Reflections with this disabled. So we're still getting all the information that we wanted. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the IPR for now. And as I said, I'm going to get Sphere and I'm going to drag it up by 100. So it's snug on the floor of this. I'm going to give it a load of segments. And then I'm just going to check. Yeah, we're quite close to the curve. We don't want this to be intersecting. We just want this to get rid of the horizon line and give a nice soft background. So we don't want it too close. Okay, now I'm going to go into the arc again, go into points and just adjust them so we've got more curtain. Uh, I think we might need more at the top, not entirely sure. Okay, then I'm going to create a camera by just clicking on this camera. I'm going to click this button here which makes us um, able to move the camera in the viewport manipulation. Okay, and then I'm going to the coordinates and clean up these coordinates. So I'm going to set negative 90, 0, 0. And then I'm just going to drop this down a bit until it's somewhat centered. Now in the object, I'm going to go into focal length and I'm going to use 70. Now this is subjective, you can use whatever you want. I'm just using this because we've got some sort of photo studio set up and I thought some sort of portrait lens would be quite appropriate for this. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to zoom in a bit, just fill the frame. And um, so we've cut off the edges. We might be a bit close to this object actually, but I'm going to use this for example. You can do what you want at this stage. Now, good practice is to right click the camera, go to rigging and select protection. What this does is it stops you from accidentally moving the camera which is very easily done, especially if you're just starting in cinema. So good practice, put this on a camera whenever you don't want it to move. Now we're going to click this so we can go back to our default view and everything's looking great. I'm going to create another material. Now this one, you can create whatever material you want to create. I'm going to drag this on the sphere because at this stage, this is down to your preference or whatever you're working with. I'm going to make this say white again i'm going to give it reflection roughness of about 0.45 maybe so it's quite quite rough but not too rough um don't really know if that was really a good description but that's that's what i'm going to be using now if we're going to here and hit the ipr we get this which is not too dissimilar to the render i was showing at the start of the video just a different scale maybe a slight bit different. 
Now you can push this further by adjusting camera settings, like in the lens effect, you've got bloom, flare, things like that. Um, you can add other lights under the lights tab here, so you can get some area lights and infant lights, spotlights and stuff, just to further decorate whatever it is that you're um, trying to build. But just for a quick view, or like a quick um, way of developing the look of the project or asset that you're building, you know, this setup's really efficient because all we've done, like, we've just built a backdrop curtain and a dome light with a texture in it, and we're already getting some really nice results. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty much it. And as you can see, you can just cycle through, change the textures in the HDRI to get completely different moods and looks, and then you can just cycle through these until you get something that you like. You could be like, yep, yeah, this is what I want, and then you can develop that scene further. Maybe you can get rid of the backdrop curtain at that stage and build your own interior environment or exterior, whatever it is. So yeah, I hope this helped. Um, if not, let me know in the comments or if you have any other suggestions or queries or complaints, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can address them. And yeah, otherwise I shall see you in the next episode.